Well, it's been almost three years since the release of Warhammer End Times Vermintide. Developed by Fat Shark, it was a cooperative first-person hack and slash set in the Warhammer universe, and taking a bit of gameplay influence from the Left 4 Dead series. Now in 2018, we've got the sequel, Warhammer Vermintide 2. And if you didn't get enough of hacking Ratman to pieces in the first game, well then this one's probably going to give you that fix. Even throwing in the new Warriors of Chaos faction to slaughter as well. It's like the video game equivalent of a Surf of Turf. The story in Vermintide 2 takes place after the events of the first game, as you'd expect, with the Warriors of Chaos having joined forces with the Skaven army, and you'll have to disrupt their plans across three different acts, broken up with four or five levels each. Each act culminating in a boss fight. Like the first game, you choose to play as either Barden the Dwarf, Karelian the Wood Elf, Victor the Witch Hunter, Sienna the Wizard, or my boy Kruba the Knight. Each hero offers up vastly different abilities, though the core mechanics are pretty much the same for each of them, with a melee weapon and some kind of ranged weapon as well. Then each hero also has three unique careers, which are like subclasses within each hero that offers up unique skill sets. To sum up the gameplay, the way it works is that you just move through each of the levels, killing droves of standard enemies who usually go down in a couple of hits, mixed in with the toughest special enemies who often have the ability to incapacitate players and the odd boss fight here and there. It's often been compared to Left 4 Dead, and honestly, that's a fairly good comparison at the most basic level. Right off the bat from the opening prologue, I was just amazed at how good this game looks. Every aspect of the game's presentation, from the visuals through to the sound, just shows off a real sense of polish and artistic flair. The banter between each of the heroes during levels is pretty funny stuff to listen to, and even the way someone's going to comment on something like picking up ammunition or taking out a special enemy just breathes a lot of life and believability into each of the characters. I promise you this, darlings. I'll avenge every death. Never fear! This door Help is warrior, a most daring some of the environments too just look absolutely stunning, like there were times when I was playing a level for the first time and I'd literally just have to stop for like a few seconds and take in the surroundings. There's certain areas which I honestly think are some of the best looking environments I think I've ever seen in a video game. It's a game you can tell has had a lot of love put into it and for Warhammer fans I'd imagine it's the stuff of wet dreams. I was running the game on an i7, a GTX 1080 and 16GB of RAM, and the frame rate was pretty much rock steady almost the entire time, which was a good thing considering you're often dealing with dozens of enemies at once. Though I've got to say that playing it turned my computer into a goddamn jet engine. What most people really care about though is the gameplay, and Vermintide 2 is definitely good, but it's also a little bit relentless in that regard. Getting into your first match, I think most players are going to be surprised at just how challenging the game is. Vermintide 2 is hard, even on the so-called recruit difficulty, which serves as the game's easy mode. The first I'd say maybe half dozen if not more matches I played was with players around my same level, and time after time we just kept wiping on the first boss we came up against, simply because we just couldn't do enough damage to it to take it down quickly enough before it wrecked our shit. Even when you're on a higher level, some of the bosses can really ruin your day if you don't know what the hell you're doing, and even if you do know what you're doing, the whole game runs off some kind of internal RNG mechanic, and sometimes a boss might spawn in a place that isn't all that advantageous to the player, making taking them out a lot harder. Some bosses are just going to be a pain regardless, like the Chaos Spawn for instance, no matter what level you are, is just a complete pain in the ass. The plus side to this I guess is that you often only have to fight one per level, but you can expect to die to these things a fair bit early on. Lost. Lost beyond words. Wow. Thankfully though, the progression system has improved a lot from the first game. When you level up, you'll always get a loot chest which comes with three items scaled to your level, and equipping these items then increases your power level. Power levels are directly responsible for, among other things, the amount of damage you do, and once I'd finally leveled up a few times and gotten some half-decent weapons and items, I started to find the game a lot easier. Chests are also earned by finishing a level as well, and you can improve the quality of these by finishing a level more quickly, collecting tomes, loot dice, or grabbing health-restricting grimoires. Tomes have to take the slot of a healing items, and the grimoires lower your health, and it adds a kind of high-risk, high-reward factor to the gameplay. Overall though, it's a way better system than the first game, which was honestly part of the reason I stopped playing it when it first came out, among other things. And then just when you start finding the game too easy, and your power level gets high enough to see diminishing returns, you can turn up the difficulty mode to the next setting and go right back to square one again. So the combat in Vermintide 2 is simple on the surface, but it can take a while to master. The way it works is you've got a normal attack, a charged up heavy attack, and then you can either block with your equipped weapon or dodge left, right, or backwards. Blocking attacks in what's essentially a horde shooter can just sound like a bad idea. 
and it initially feels really overwhelming, but once you get a basic understanding of how it all works, it becomes a bit more manageable, and it is really important, even on the lower difficulties. The main issue though is that even when you know what you're doing, sometimes you're just going to find yourself in a really shitty position, attacked from all sides, and it can be near impossible to get out of this without taking a few hits. Where it also starts to break down is that certain weapons are pretty much useless in certain situations. Like there's weapons that are outright useless against armored enemies and you can whack on these guys all day but it's not going to do a damn thing. Similarly with pushing enemies back, which you do by pressing attack when you're blocking, some weapons are better or worse at this. And if you don't have the right weapon for the job, which might not be your fault, you might just not be playing the right build, well there's not really all that much you can do to mitigate getting your ass kicked. It's not a bad combat system, it just takes a bit of time to learn, and eventually you'll play a lot better. On that note, I think gamers these days are a bit spoiled in the way that they expect to be good at a game from the get-go. The recent Kingdom Come Deliverance was another example of a combat system that most people dismissed because they couldn't pick it up within 5 minutes of playtime. And sometimes it just takes a while to learn the ropes. Impaled! Oops! Ah, such crude torture! Something that Vermintide 2 just does extremely well though is the way that it nails the feeling of the melee combat. Regardless of who you're playing as, when you're swinging something sharp at someone, it just has this really good feeling of weight to it. What kind of helps us along too is the really satisfying gore system combined with some incredible sound design. The way you can separate body parts from enemies is really something of a spectacle and when you're just swinging wildly at the droves of brain dead pricks rushing your position, it's really awesome seeing their blood and guts flying across the screen as they let out these horrified grunts and shrieks. I mean, I'm not trying to sound like a psycho or anything, but look, a really enjoyable melee combat system and the feeling of this system is the kind of thing that's really going to make or break a game like this. And my point is, is that they really nailed it. Oh, so that's satisfying. <laughs> but I think one of the things that annoys me the most about this game, and it's not even really the game's fault, is the other people who play it. Now, some people, I'm not going to say all of them because that's not true, are just completely branded when they play this, and often oblivious to the fact that there's three other people they're supposed to be working alongside. Like you might get incapacitated by a special enemy and the other players will do nothing to assist you, or they might just run off like idiots by themselves and end up getting quickly killed. People who play the Dwarf Slayer career are particularly good at this. And it's not even really a matter of being new to the game, I don't think, it's just a complete ignorance for the basic mechanics and even common sense that seems to elude them. Vermintide 2 just seems to bring out the inner retard in some of the people playing and it can become incredibly frustrating. I guess my point is that it's definitely the kind of game you're going to want to play with friends instead of randoms online. Oh, 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 oh my god, okay, chill, chill the fuck out mate. Where my interest started to falter was when I started to see how repetitive it all got and I realised I was just doing the same maps over and over. That's the make or break factor with this game when you break it all down and how long you're going to play it is dependent on how long you just want to keep grinding it out. There is a campaign in Vermintide 2, but it's really just a series of connected levels held together by the story. And once you've finished all of these in consecutive order, what's most likely going to happen is you just begin replaying the shortest and quickest levels, over and over to level up all of the characters to the level cap. Memorizing the locations of the tomes and grimoires and trying to maximize the amount of XP and loot you can get per run. It is a pretty long game in that sense, so I mean I played for around 20 hours before doing this video, and in that time I got 3 of the heroes to around level 12 each, so considering the current cap is 30, that's a lot of time you're going to have to spend grinding away if you want to max each of them out. Not to mention experimenting with the different careers, the different builds and all that kind of stuff, I mean simply equipping different staff types on a character like Sienna for instance can vastly affect how she plays. Overall I enjoyed Vermintide 2 a lot more than the previous games, and I think they've definitely improved it in terms of how combat feels and definitely in terms of the presentation. It's honestly just one of the best looking and sounding games I've played in a long long time. Oh, yes, it's, funny, isn't it? it's a game with an incredible amount of polish that you can tell has been made lovingly by fans of the Warhammer universe, and it's gory, violent, loud, and it's a lot of fun to play. Hey, you're really is out killing us all at the moment. Step it up, darling. On the PC, it's already got almost triple the play base the original game had, and that's only with it being released for a single week, so there's no worries of getting a game going either. Whether or not you're a fan of the Warhammer universe is redundant. I think anyone who enjoys killing lots of rat men and barbarians will get a lot of fun out of this, until it gets to the point where you can no longer hack it. 